Okay, so I'm going to use the Thaumaturgy here to, and the effect I choose is the harmless tremors in the ground for a minute around the goblins to see what they do. They, it's like they, it's like they are all very startled, looking around, trying to find what's going on. They all seem very, very confused, but they don't run away. Once the tremors stop, they resume arguing like nothing, like nothing happened. As, does the dagger go back, uh, lower, and then go back into the air? Yep. Uh, d- during the time, during the time frame that you shook the ground, shook, he lowered it and then put it back in the air. What do you okay, do? Okay, then. I use Bamoturgy again to create an instant a sound of ominous whispers on the opposite side of them. All of them look and over in that when... area. What? All of them look over in that area, and the goblin lowers the dagger to point it at the area where the whispers are. I'm going to... Uh... Try so then I'm gonna uh, well the whispers going on I'm going to e- cause uh, use it again to cause the tre- harmless tremors in the ground again. The goblins all look very concerned, wondering what's going on. They they appear and to be well, talking in goblin at... tongue. You're not sure what they're saying, but the one mm-hmm. goblin who has the mace is trying to get them to stop even more. He's a bit more frantic about it now, though. And well. Well, they're distracted. I try to uh, stealthily take the lightning-shaped dagger from the one guy. All right, make a stealth roll with advantage to get near him. Okay, stealth roll. That's a seventeen. Yeah, the goblins are the goblins are more, trying to figure out. They seem more concerned about about the thermaturgy effects than they do about your stealth roll. Okay. Uh, uh, um, can I try to uh, take the he dagger from him? Go ahead. The da- the dagger is in his left hand, which is currently closest to you. Uh, that would be a sleight of hand check, right? Yep, sleight of hand check with advantage because he's he's confused about what's going on. Uh, that's an 18. I'm going to have him roll perception real quick. Alright. So we're back. We had a bug out happen with the software. But, um, in case you guys are wondering, the goblin ended up getting a 4 minus 1. So it does not it does not notice Sir Kenku taking the dagger from him. Sir Kenku b- during the during the time we weren't recording ended up getting away and the goblins began shouting about who the one goblin who lost his dagger began shouting. He goes, "Who the hell took my dagger? I'm going to murder you." And as of right now, they, they begin arguing in common tongue this time. That can be understood. And just goes, I didn't take your dagger. You had it the whole time. He goes, no, I did it's, If It's not on my hand. Where did it go? All of a sudden, Sir Kenku hears a giant thud in the distance. And just goes, and just goes, look, man, I'm sorry. But I'm sorry about all this. But like, the other's already mad enough. We should probably get going. Just goes, yeah. And I I'll use thermotug. Uh, then I use thermotuggy to use the Raven Cry right. ability. The goblins yell, "Bucket! There are supernatural forces at work!" Then Turkin Ku chuckles at that. We then jump to Ray, who is follow, who is running, who is carefully making his way into the fog with his cane sword drawn. He walks in and he sees two goblins fighting over what appears to be a pink scale. Ray, being Ray, is going to is going to make his way over since they don't see him. 
And the first thing he is going to do... He is going to cast the spell Minor Illusion. He makes a lion roar come out. The goblins look terrified as they as they quickly like drop the scale they're messing with. Ray and Ray and their Ray and with their surprise is going since they're really close to it. He's going to cast Eldritch Blast, hitting both goblins in the head, knocking them to the ground in the process. He is then going. He is then going to end up slashing one goblin and clubbing him with his cane sheath. The next. Slashing one, killing him, and then just and and then just hitting the other, and then hitting the other with his cane sword, killing him with the remaining damage. He ends up picking up. He ends up picking up the pink scale, and in his head, he hears the following. He just goes, "Oh yeah, I forgot." You hear a feminine voice goes, "Oh yeah, I forgot that scale was here." And just goes, you've been a good, as like, you've been a good boy, Pinky. Ray just goes, please don't call me by that name, ma'am. And just goes, why did I tell you to call me? I'm sorry, mistress. And by the way, this, this is, this is being said in Draconic. Tyler, make a perception check. See if you can hear Ray shouting in Draconic. <laughs> as a gift, and, and she mentions as a gift for, for, for uh, Ray finding that random scale he found, he says, "Here, you go. she goes. Here you go, hon. Have an additional spell slot. Get it's a gift for me to you. Plus, when you get it, it's like plus when you get a chance, take take that take that scale to a church. I'll get some use out of it later." Ray said, "I don't hear shit. I rolled a one. Oh, I didn't hear that. All right, yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't hear, uh, you don't hear Ray making a sound." And then the one thing that Ray notices on the goblins is that, surprisingly, these goblins are both carrying, are both carrying what appear to be industrial grade weapons on them. He's, he seems very, very concerned, as goblins don't normally have this type of equipment level. Something is definitely, something is definitely going wrong. So on the one on the one goblin he ends up getting a short but on the one goblin he ends up getting a short bow with with five arrows. The other guy he finds two daggers. And he and at that point he ends up making his way back to the party. Cade, we go back to or goes back to where the party ran off from. I'm assuming he sees Sir Kenku there waiting, right, Tyler? No, because he's just hiding in tall grass near the starting area in the fog. All right, then you see Ray lost. So any Ray's turn, you see, or on, on the end of Ray's turn, Sir Kenku, you see Ray coming out. He has his cane sword in hand. And he has his hand, he has his palm out, ready to shoot somebody, ready to shoot something that comes out at him. Cade, we come oh. back to you, buddy. What are you doing? I'm just kind of walking back, being proud of my victories. Suddenly, as, as you're walking back, a large fog cloud ends up filling the area. Oh. I'm like, huh. Do you continue walking? I'm a turkey craze. A ravens. I would say only Ray hears that. Uh, I know <clears throat> that's the target. He, he looks. He he looks. He, he fires off an eldritch blast into the direction of which the crow's ends are coming from. Obviously, I don't make it to near me. Yeah, I would figure. Uh, Cade, you you all you all you all of a sudden hear a you hear a small explosion go off nearby. I'm like, this must be the god of myth. You will be my first target to fall. Cade, as you run as you run back, you currently see Ray firing off a couple of eldritch blasts into the bushes nearby. 
Oh. And goes, and goes, kid, I think we're good now. Oh. All right. He goes, I'm with Pergy Mork Ravens. Ray begins firing Eldritch Blast again. <laughs> I'm like, damn, damn, missed God. Ray, and at, at that at that point, Ray just says, "There is no mist god, man. There's a mischievous dragon god, however." Oh. 